We're still back here with the Breakfast at Plus TV Africa. Uh, we'll be speaking with Professor Kenny Fair, who's a developmental economist. He joins us from the FCT. Uh, happy New Year, Professor Ken. Oh, thank you very much. And happy New Year to you too. All right, then uh, let's get to this conversation with, of course, the Nigerian uh, Employers Consultative Association saying that it's okay, the adjustment in the current premium rate for motor insurance is desirable in order to grow the economy. Now, a quick one to this is that, um, you know, there's been an increment which should take effect as at yesterday, which is the 1st of January 2023. The third party motor insurance policy uh, being increased from 5,000 Naira to 15,000 Naira, like I mentioned earlier on, uh, 1st of January 2022. So apparently yesterday was a weekend, and let's say today is Monday. It's a public holiday, but somehow uh, that's what it is. What do you make of this justification and this development? There are two, there are two issues. One is, is it justified to have an increase if you have not had one over the last five years? The answer is yes. Because, you know, this thing is a moving target and it's, it's, it's a price. And price are subject to demand and supply issues, related issues. And uh, but the second point is, what is the quantum of the increase? A 300% increase is just not on. You know, you shouldn't be doing 300% increase. Um, you should be doing an increase, but not to the level of 300%. Let, let me explain. What happens is that increases of this nature are inevitable, especially when there are increases in the whole environment, in the whole cost environment, both cost of services and cost of goods. For example, car prices have gone up phenomenally, uh, and all kinds of services have gone up, goods have gone up. Yes, that's fine. But how do you index an increase? You have to increase this sequentially. You have to, for example, index it to inflation. Inflation is about 21.6%. Uh, yes, you know, you should be increasing this thing gradually over time rather than take a quantum jump of 300% increase. And then when you do this, even though it's within your rights, you also have a duty to consult extensively the stakeholder community. Um, that you use insurance. And of course, NECA is a, is a very close member of that community. So that's why they are coming out and, and, and supporting it. But you have to consult people on what are, what are the reasons for the increase, which we all know, and then what are the benefits? Are you going to increase the service level agreement so that these people will become more efficient in their provision of services, in their insurance services? increasing their response time, in other words, making it shorter so that when people complain, they respond quickly. Settling claims. What are the service level on settling claims? You have to bring that closer to the people. So there's so many and then sensitization because it's the job of Nikon to sensitize the, the, the country because people are, only a very small number of people are using insurance services. It's very good for the economy for us to increase that. So that's sensitization. And so they must be telling us how much are they going to invest in sensitization because the more people that come into insurance, the lower is the cost of insurance. So all these are must be addressed in one way or the other. But um, let's look at, you know, the rationale or some of the reasons given for this adjustment you have stated that if this not if the agency or the association has not had an increment uh, for a period of time then uh, i think it's desirable to have all of that which we know that that doesn't happen in a long time but moving away they have said that this is in order to grow the economy develop the industry and provide some effective risks uh, to mitigate services to the generality of nigerians uh, do you think that this is anything to go by? You know, the argument is sound. It's sound because the bigger the number of people involved in insurance, the better for the economy. Why do you insure goods? If you insure goods, people have the safety of wanting to invest. If you insure agriculture, which they are doing, then banks will lend to agriculture. Then farmers will borrow. 
the farmers will go to farm with the rest of mind that if the flood comes and take away all their plants or anything, all the unexpected hazards, that they will not go out of business. So it is important. It encourages business. Insurance encourages the manufacturers of cars to even be able to, to, to do more business. So that it generally helps the economy, both the suppliers and the supply. So it, it does have a huge, huge role to play in uh, improving even customer credit. You can give customer credit even when you have an insurance, but if they fail to pay, insurance kicks in. So the credit expansion of the economy is aided by insurance. Mm. So those are, those are very cogent reasons. But the thing is that you don't want to create um, an army of people who don't want to pay their insurance because you suddenly increase it by 300% and they haven't got the money. So they start forging things, doing, evading the you, know, you don't do that. You take it. It's the same story as our, our fuel subsidy. You don't wait until one, one bank you remove the fuel subsidy and then everybody goes amok. You increase it gradually. Every three months, you increase it by 10%. Increase it by 10%. And people will take the pain and they will gradually, gradually rise to, to the appropriate level over if you, you know, if a small um, time, you know, that time and um, extended time period, not just one bank of 300% increase in price. It doesn't work like that. But um, how would you describe, you know, the level of awareness or you want to say acculturation of insurance in terms of vehicle insurance in Nigeria? Do you think that, you know, um, it's anywhere close to 50%? Now, it's, it's very, very small. It really, really is like we are working around 10% of the potential customer base that they should be delivering to. And that, is, that has a knock-on effect. When you have a very narrow customer base, then the economy suffers. Every other, but every other person, and then you too, you start cutting corners. You will provide efficient service. You will be arguing with customers on each and every incident. And then you'll be, you'll be delaying uh, their, their payment and their recovery and all kinds of things. Imagine if, if you have a terrorism insurance and your market is, is uh, set ablaze, then no settlement. For one year, they're arguing. People have lost one year livelihood. You know, it's something that if you planted crops and there was a flood, then you'll be arguing with them for another one year, another family season is gone. And you're not, you're not, you're not the compensation. So it's, it, it's a very vital service that underpins the rapid growth in the economy, especially in the asset of the economy. So it's very important. But it has to be, the regulator has to uh, be a bit more responsible in the sense that you keep on working with them. Because if they have consulted stakeholders extensively, they won't allow them to do 300% swoop. They will say, stagger this, stagger it over the year, you know, Put in 50%, put in another 50%, after three more six months, and then cut until you, you level to your 300 over a period of one year or two years. You don't do a bank of 300% increase just like that. Uh, Professor Ife, how can we develop, you know, this industry, uh, the insurance industry? Because in developed climes, it's reported that it plays a major role uh, in terms of national development, among others. It is a risk takeoff, right? So what can we do to develop this uh, sector so we can contribute, you know, to nation building and our, our GDP as well? Well, you know, first of all, you have to have consumer confidence. And this, this, if there's anything that is going to knock confidence, consumer confidence, it is just this kind of action of increasing it by 300%, just like that. It knocks, it, it pushes a lot of people out of this, out of the uh, formal economy. They will now join the informal economy of evading tax, evading uh, insurance, forging insurance certificates. That's what you push them to, just because of the way you implement it. Secondly, um, you need to raise your awareness of the benefit of this. And people don't know. People just don't know. Many people will venture into many activities if they know that there is an insurance company. If you take, for example, uh, agriculture, the commercial banks don't want anything to do with agriculture because they see it as a high-risk area and low return. But if insurance moves in, it gives them the confidence to lend to the people. So it is a way of de-risking the, the the sector. 
So insurance helps me to de risk a sector and, uh, and it's, it's applicable to all sectors. So, uh, you know, so they, 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 nobody has to actually argue about the benefit of insurance. But it's just the selling of this, the sensitization of the people, the continuous carrying along these people, these stakeholders as you move along. And, uh, and then make sure you, you can be trusted because customer trust and confidence is critical. When somebody gets beaten twice on trying to make his claim and he can't get it, there's this kind of notoriety of the industry. They trust people, just don't trust the industry. They believe that any money you pay in insurance is the money that you have lost because they don't have any faith that you will ever secure a claim. And if they have successful claim, which you showcase successful claim because people move with their feet, they vote with their All feet. Right. Uh, so they have to. Yes, we have to go now. Uh, Professor Ife, uh, thank you so much. Uh, we're just uh, out of time, and we hope that we can have more of this conversation in 2023. Thank you very much. All right, then, thank you so much as well for being part of the breakfast this morning. We have been speaking with a developmental economist, uh, Professor Ken Ife. We take a break now to join the newsroom at 9 o'clock. If you missed out on any part of the conversation, that's all right to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And do subscribe to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. My name is Messi Bopo. Join us at 9. Thank you.